what's up you guys, After Joe Reacts here and today I'm going to be reacting to some more Legacies. This is Season 4, Episode 8. Um, so yeah, let's go over the comments. Um, I'm actually a little annoyed that the story of Caroline's humanity flip came from another one of Rick's journals instead of, for example, Josie coming into the scene and saying, I got off the phone with my mum and she told me how to fix Hope. Or she could have called Uncle Damon or Aunt Elena, who she lived with last season, who also had their own humanity issues. Yeah, exactly. What the hell? What the hell? I want to give Ethan and Finch partial credit for trying, but I have to immediately take away because they were such thundering dumb answers in how they went about it. A single needle and a sneak attack, really? Dump a bucket of vervain or wolfsbane on her and then inject her. Yeah, they were fucking stupid. Dum dums. In terms of tribrid hope, I don't think we'll get the full tribrid tour due to COVID, COVID restrictions resulting in them relying more on her magical abilities rather than fighting abilities like class. That doesn't mean we won't get some tribrid bad badassery, but. Um, I don't think we'll get as grand as the writers wanted it to be with COVID sh had not shown up. Okay, sorry. <laughs> I think Lizzie will be the key in turning Hope's humanity back on because uh, since they're building up this story where she plans to kill her, they can pull a twist where she was the one who saved her. Then they can do a Superman scenario where Cleo will create a stake from a tree, but... Hope destroys it before they can create more. Then after Hope's humanity is back on, she trusts the last stake to Lizzie to use it on her if her humanity, if she ever turns her humanity off again. I mean, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. I'm really liking Jed this season. Uh, I feel like his comedy relief is just r the right amount where you don't get annoyed by it every time and can actually laugh at the things that he says and does, unlike some other characters on the CW, Mona and Gary, especially Mona. Fair, fair assumption. Yeah, I agree. Um, this episode definitely makes me think that Josie is going to be the one who turns Hope Humanity on. Uh, hopefully it happens with Josie in some sort of danger, like maybe she's about to die or Landon will be the one to do it when he somehow comes back to life again. Man, I don't know. Um, I do... Look, I'm going to address this right now. I feel really bad for Hosey Shippers. Because, like... I went on Twitter after watching, like, last week's episode. And, like, people were, like, tweeting the... The pick on someone your own size thing. Like, Josie said it to Hope. And Caroline said it to Klaus. It's kind of like a parallel. And they just, like... All of the hosey shippers out there were like, yes, this, this, this confirms that they're into each other, like, this, this, and honestly, it just feels like they're, like, holding on to any kind of crumbs that they're given, and I feel kind of bad, like, <sighs> I don't think it's happening, I really don't, from what I understand, the showrunner is, is a hand in shipper. And, you know, it's not Julie Pleck anymore, and since season three began or something, I don't know, man. I just, I feel kind of bad for them, like, uh, I don't know. Um, is Jed a hybrid? Bec does he have a moon ring? Because how did he transform into a wolf at will and back into human after? He didn't, but he had, like, a bunch of wolves around, and it wasn't a full moon, so you're right. Um, in that aspect, kind of weird. Um, I'm all for people shipping whoever they want on shows. I think it's the beautiful part about shows when you have this feeling where, when you see characters interact, when they have scenes together, whether they're romantic or platonic. Yeah. I think platonic friendships are underrated, to be honest. I agree. I feel like there are a lot of TV shows where like every single cast member dates each other and it becomes just kind of 
<laughs> annoying. Like, as someone who has been friend-zoned, it's nice to see it represented, I feel. Uh, but if you saw the way the fandom treats the Legacies writers on social media, it's pretty awful. I understand plot frustrations, but yikes. No wonder they're all over the place. <sighs> I agree with you too. If Hope actually killed someone on the Super Squad this app, at least it would have been a shocking um, episode scene. This app did nothing to move the plot forward. We already knew all of the characters' motives. Exactly. And I'm just going to say, like, she's supposed to have her humanity off, but she wouldn't hurt... Pedro's feelings? Come on! Like, ugh. I feel like they're too scared to make her mean. They're scared that people won't like her if she's actually truly mean and monstrous. But like, dude, people loved Catherine. She got annoying five seasons in. But people loved her. And she was mean. She was, she was evil, right? They're just too scared. The writers are so scared to try some things, actually go through with things, I feel. I don't think for a second anyone thought Dark Josie with crop top was a formidable foe for Hope, lol. All she did was make ridiculous insults and was just really weird. I agree. Uh, someone actually... Someone made a comment on the YouTube cut of the video, um, which I'd like to highlight. Sometimes I do this. What do you want from me? Um, you make a good comment, I'll talk about it. Um, <laughs> um, where is it? I don't like the Dark Josie has become something that can be switched on and off so easily. To compare with Buffy, skip forward like 30 seconds if you've never seen Buffy, uh, Dark Willow came from extreme circumstances and it took a lot to bring her back. Um, afterwards, Dark Willow was a looming threat that haunted Willow to the point of telling her girlfriend that she may have to stab her if she turned, if she ended up doing a powerful spell. With Josie, the more she's brought back and sent away, the less it feels like a real threat and something to care about. At this point, she's being overused and doesn't feel like a big deal anymore. And I have, I wholeheartedly agree. I, I thought it was cringy from the beginning, but I fucking think it's cringy as hell now. It's really, like, it's, it's too much. It's, she doesn't feel as strong as she did in her first appearance. It just feels like, oh, Kaylee, you know, Kaylee has fun with, with this character. We like this character. Let's bring it back every instance that we can. Ah, uh, not a fan. Really enjoyed the reaction. Admirable job burning through the western parts of the episode. I didn't have an issue with it mainly being that I grew up on westerns, although the accents were a bit annoying. I assume it's probably the same for you when... You, as an Australian, hearing non-Australians trying to do the accent and being really bad at it. Yeah, 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 it's frustrating when they're like, they do like this weird Australian accent and I just, I, I, oh, yeah, 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 it drives me mental. I'm like, we don't sound like that, you know? Um, it was the same for me and the accents during those scenes. I do think that Western part was good though, as it helped move Lizzie's storyline. Um, it gave us insight into her thoughts. Apparently she sees Josie as already lost to hope. Also, I think it makes sense that somewhere in the back of her mind, and especially as a witch, she knows that nature wouldn't create a tribrid without creating a way to kill her. Yep. Also, her mind must suspect what it may be, or at least where to look. The guns name, the guns named after the Salvatore brothers, and Rick saying that within the guns held the key to, to kill Hope. Really love the end with Josie and entering and, and Lizzie leaving. Yeah, so I have an issue with that, and I'm gonna I'm gonna explain. So like my issue mainly is the fact that like 
So, what was it? It was like season two, right? I believe, like, it was when, you know, Dark Josie was having her moments and she was like, it was a black and white episode, right? And they're all in the, they're, they're in the, the box, they're all in the therapy box and she's slowly killing them all, but you don't know who it is, right? And they get thrown out and we're led to believe that they're killed and then immediately thrown out, right? It was like really abrupt. They were like, they talk about how they were in there and then they were out. Right? But now they've just introduced this enter and exit room. What? Uh, and I know that it was just created so that, you know, Lizzie and Josie could have a talk at the end. But it just doesn't make sense to the way that it was established from the beginning. Does that mean that every time that they have died in this therapy box, they've gone into an exit room? It just, it just, it's weird. I don't know. Didn't, didn't make sense to me. No, no, no. Um. While this episode didn't do much, I think it was important with kind of forming cracks within the super squad. Obviously there is Josie and Lizzie both being on opposite sides. You have Fitch and Ethan as new the newbies who seem to be feeling like they're on the outside because they are. There's MG who's trying to be the leader. Then there's Clear keeping a secret even though she said she wanted to believe in her friends and wanted to trust them from the beginning. It feels like she wanted a reason not to tell them. And Ethan and Finch were a con were convenient scapegoats. Yeah, what the fuck? Sure, m maybe don't tell them about about it, but maybe Josie and MG? I think people needed to see No Humanity Hope because no one had seen her since she turned her emotions off except Josie, Lizzie and MG through Alaric's memory. Now I think we're going to see them choosing sides uh, where some will agree with Lizzie and killing Hope and others will side with Josie. Alright. Uh, really interested and Jed and his backstory now. Yeah, they keep like teasing these backstories and and they're just not delivering. So, were those supposed to be regular wolves or werewolves? Because it wasn't night when they showed up, but they were in wolf form. Yeah, I don't know. So if they were werewolves, they could only be two, re two reasons most likely. Um, they were part... They were at some point part of Haley and Jackson's pack and got the ability to change at will through the ceremony or two they have been cursed to remain in wolf form maybe like Jackson and Haley were um, with only one day in human form. If either of these are the case that brings up how Jed knows them um, it could really be interesting if Jed was tied to them somehow which means in ways him being tied to hope through her mom's side. <sighs> I feel like they don't really elaborate that much on werewolves, so I don't think we're ever gonna get an answer to that, to be honest. I mean, how many times has hope turned into a wolf? Um, it is interesting that you mentioned wanting them to spice things up with going in with Hope and Josie. I've been thinking that they've been tiptoeing around it this season, though these first three episodes, through these first three episodes. It's like they're having Josie acting in a way like someone who has feelings for Hope, but not wanting to outright say it or address it. They keep bringing up how stressed and spiraling out Josie is and... Lizzie mentioning that Josie cares more about helping Hope than her father. Also, in Lizzie's vision, she sees Josie as being turned by Hope into a vampire, which I think is her mind be believing that Josie has been seduced or her feelings are getting in the way of Hope for the monster she is now. See, this is the, the, the issue that I brought up before. I feel like people are just scraping at crumbs at this point. I really don't think they're going to do it. I think it would spice things up. Which makes me want them do want, which makes me want them to do it. I don't know. 
I'm thinking we may get an Elena type situation for Hope's humanity to, to, to return. Just how things are being set up. I think Lizzie is going to figure out the tree can kill Hope and is going to go after her. The two may battle or Lizzie may sneak up on her, but before she can deliver a killing blow, either MG or Josie will get in the way. They will get hurt, seeing the person hurt combined with Lizzie's reaction to possibly killing someone she loves will kind of force Hope's humanity to return, like when Damon killed Matt in front of Elena. I don't know, man. A lot of this stuff is, like, interesting ideas. Would the show do it, though? <sighs> man, I... Season 1 of this show was really good. And they brought in Kai, and that was great. And then they jumped the shark with him. And then... It's been in, like, a spiral downwards since... I, I want to I want to really love the show again. I do. I love this universe. I do. I just I feel like I'm complaining a lot and I don't really like complaining about shows all the time. So I want to I want to enjoy it. Like give me something to enjoy, you know? I don't know. Um I heard you say that you don't ship Hosey, but what are your thoughts on them and if they were to happen, would you be interested? Um, so, I don't ship them. Here's, here's how I feel. I don't ship them. That doesn't mean that I won't ship them. So, I want them to just mix things up. Right? I want them to try something new. Like, well, not new, but in a way, kind of new for the show. I mean, what relationships have we had on this show? Okay? We've had... Um, Hope and Landon, okay? We had Josie liked Raph for like five minutes. Lizzie liked Raph for five minutes. Um. We had Penelope and Josie for five minutes, okay? I think that was all of season one. Season 2, we had Landon and Josie, and that lasted a couple of episodes. That was fine. I didn't ship them, but it was different. And then we've got, like, MG and Lizzie, like it's a ship. It's just, I don't know what's happening with that. You know, Ethan flirted with Hope for five minutes. Ethan flirted with Lizzie for five minutes. Cleo and Caleb. Like, where's the, like, at this point in the Vampire Diaries, we had had Caroline, Matt, Caroline, Tyler, Elena and Damon, Elena and Stefan, Bonnie and Jeremy. Like, we had some, like, interconnections everywhere. Where is that? And my, so my, my thing is, I wouldn't be against Hosey if it spiced the story up. And maybe they could do something good with it. But it seems like they're really sticking to this Finch situation. Who's kind of boring. I wanted to like her. I wanted to be happy about, you know, an LGBTQ ship. But I feel nothing for it. And I think... Look, I think if, if, if we just had, like, Josie be like, Oh, but Hope, I love you, or whatever, I don't know, right? And then Finch is like, what do you mean? There's drama. And then she'll have to pick between the two of them. And then that's even more drama. And then, you know, she could ultimately pick Finch if she wants. I don't give a shit, okay? I just want some fucking real drama. Not just, I'm sad about Landon. All the fucking time. You know, anyways. It's just a little frustrating, I think. Um... Saying Landon is a good character, but they need to stop killing him because it's 
gotten to the point where his death is no longer believable since he's come back so much. And actually killing him off now wouldn't do anything emotionally anymore since we expect him to return even if he doesn't. Yeah. The word in the comments tet 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 is pronounced tat to tat uh ah ha ha right i'm just moving on um i remember you telling me in voice a couple of days before you watched 407 and while sure it might be the spell that john gilbert used it is still very conveniently placed in rick's secret journal that was hidden in a secret safe only for it to be found by lizzie yeah Um, you don't have killies now, fruits, but when you do, they look good on you. On hope, not so much. I she looks really nice with curls in her hair, just not crinkles. Um, what the fuck is this intro? I already prepped one for the edit. Damn it! Spoiler alert: I made a new one for the edit the next day. It had a horse neighing in it instead of the usual wolf howl. How did I come up with this shit? I don't know. You guys should go check it out. Oh, uh, to make sure that this upload had proper sound, I did catch a glimpse that it began in the Old West. I surely fucking hope that this isn't, this doesn't last the entire episode, because Jesus, would I understand and completely share the feeling of boredom you spoke of after watching it? Yeah, um, I was bored during all the western parts. Oh, I was I'm sorry. You come here for honesty and I give it to you. What do you want? <laughs> yeah, if only we could have seen, if only we could see a vision of Klaus to show up and bring Hope back. Do you know what they could do actually? Joseph Morgan is on cameo. They could literally just get a cameo from him as Klaus. I'm just I'm just saying. <laughs> um, obviously not going to happen, but I agree with your suggestion that it should be family. In fact, not just one, several family members, as I suggested before in my notes in a previous episode. Jed was actually smart enough to see Caleb was lying about the wrong number. I am surprised. Um, I mean, it didn't hope kill a bunch of guards in that place she and Clark broke into last episode. I don't think so. I think she just knocked them out. If she did, it didn't mean anything. Um, the fuck is this talent show shit? Okay, it's some lame-ass attempt at turning her humanity back on by having her friends tell a bunch of sub stories. Yeah, should have broken Pedro's feelings as well. Apparently, she still has some humanity left. Or they just don't know what the humanity switch means anymore. Um, yeah, that's either someone wearing an illusion ring or pretending to be Landon, or it's legit Landon, and they see you've done the whole story and how we got back. It's the former, of course. Good, the latter would have sucked. Ha! Unremarkable Ugh, then. Ethan. Uh, just got totally burned by hope. I love it. Hope to... Dark Josie, what took you so long? Performance anxiety? Now, nah, bish, look at her hair. She needed that stylized first. Uh, apparently, Jed runs a pack of puppies. They ran at the first sight of trouble. Lame. Uh, zombie, no good for Shan. Oh my god, no. I forgot about that. Fuck. Um, I know it can't be helped, but it sucks that some of these comments of the voice sounding like Aurora got through to you in some means. I'm not sure at all if it's really her, but if it is, so much for that reveal to be shocking. Yeah. People will really need to stop with the hypothesizing and let you find out f things for yourself. Uh, like any other normal viewer, I mean, on YouTube. I even added a warning in the edit for people not to answer your question on um, how the voice sounded familiar when it first showed up, and people still decided to answer it. I managed to delete most of it, but oh well. If this turn turns out to be her, it's not my fault we got spoiled. Yeah, um, so I recognize the voice, but like, had people not, it's, 
Had people not suggested that it was Aurora, I wouldn't have, like, thought, yeah. Yeah, it does sound like her, doesn't it? Um, but I guess we'll find out. Um, Alright, let's get into the episode. I'm Dr. Josette Saltzman, or just Josie, surgical intern at Michelson Memorial Hospital. It was always my dream job, ever since my sister told me it was when I was six. Right, I'm she's um, worry about your in the box, Saltzman. I forgot. I'm this not is a her. real doctor yet, and you don't need to worry about her me. Her box life. <laughs> I don't know who will. She's turned into Finn. <laughs> Wait five uh, minutes before you fall down. My mother was a surgeon, my father was a surgeon, and me, I'm barely holding it together. Oh, there's a picture of Klaus! This fucking rude, mate. Okay. You drive I'll take quickly. Another. I get in touch with the rest of the triad. Set a meeting for later this afternoon. We're gonna have to deal with the tri bridge sooner than expected. I'm sorry, is there a problem? Three to be exact. You're the first. Are you who's been on the phone the whole time? You're not a roller. Definitely not Aurora. I know what you're thinking. If this is my story, why isn't my dad the one the hospital's named after? Why aren't I scrubbing in on a coronary artery bypass graft? Because this isn't my story. It's hers, Dr. Hope Michelson. Technically an intern like me, but already a legend here. You're drooling on the glass again. I'm learning, which is exactly what you should be doing. She's helping pioneer a new technique. I told you to knock if it was important. Hope Michelson being annoyingly perfect is just Tuesday. Look at how steady she is. So focused and in control. It's like she doesn't even feel the pressure. Whatever. Wake me if she screws up. Okay, this... I can understand grabbing crumbs from this. Oh my god. You don't look so good. You should get out of the sun. You're getting a little pruney. Incendia! You know, if you just would've talked to me before attacking, I would've told you that this candle's not firing our magic, but I still have my vampire and werewolf powers. Because you are an affront to nature herself. I'm not the one who's using black magic to stay young. Not very natural. My vanity aside, you are cursed, child. A tribrid was never meant to exist and sullies the bloodlines of all three species. So, kill me if you must, but there will be no hiding from your fate. Do I look like I'm hiding? Why don't you tell me where the vampire and the werewolf that you're working with are? I can have this conversation with them too. And if I do, oh, I will hang be just on. as dead. It totally could still be Aurora because Ours she's a vampire. Unbreakable alliance. In in not a fucking treason, witch. What the hell am I thinking? By. Fire, yes, I know. Except you're the witch. Who bound that covenant spell in the first place. You're not dumb enough to put your life on the line. You're bluffing. And to keep with the poker metaphor, I call. I am warning you, Miss Michelson. The Alpha will tear out your blasphemous tongue. And I'm warning you, Agatha Sinclair. You're just giving me ideas. You will find the others with the... <laughs> oh, integrity. I don't miss it. That was good. Damn, Agatha. I'm guessing you got to run in with the tribrid. Yeah, we met. Oh my god. She was kind enough to tell me where your little werewolf den is, but it was pretty hard to decipher her on the screen that she was doing. <laughs> I'm looking for a Greg. Yeah, well, you found him. And my entire pack, princess. So is there anything you want to say before we do what predators do? I'm here to challenge you. Yeah, no crap. Officially, to an alpha challenge. <laughs> Yeah, you can't do that. Why not? They seem to disagree. Pack animals. Am I right? We call him Dr. Death because he can kill your career with the snap of his fingers. The only person even Hope is terrified of, also known as... Dr. Ted! What happened to Hope? Dr. Michelson is resting and you should be working, Dr. Saltzman. Is she gonna be... They okay? clearly like the She's actor. a rare genetic condition. And I get it! CMT. I do, I but... believe it's what's causing her tremors. Why? Do you treat CMT? <laughs> you don't. Now get back to work. Please forgive me, sir. I... I had no idea about the landmine. If I had, I would have warned you before it blew up in your face. Since when are their monsters in limbo? Well, I've been wondering that myself while you were failing. Perhaps they've always got here just like us. Or it could I mean, be a result of Malibu's The other side. Either way, we're not sticking around long enough to find out. Go soon. I mean, you clearly excel at making amends. I understand that the other side is okay, gone, it, it but also, might be useful, you Rick, you, find you knew where the Supernatural went. Way ahead of you. You're... Alaric Saltzman, Elizabeth's father. How can he help me? Uh. <sighs> oh. Hey. 
cow. Not exactly what we were going for. Where's fake But like how? I'm pretty sure I just killed him. Yeah, apparently my powers only work in high pressure situations or when Malivore's controlling me. It's good that you're clutch. But true clutch is being able to do it every time. That's why we call it practice. Let's run it again. This isn't exactly what I had in mind when you said we'd work on my powers. How is any of this gonna help in the fight against Hope? I mean, it could, We're you not don't know. Fighting her yet. And if it ever comes to that, your most valued skill is your ability to get people to safety. Cool. Safety guy. I wonder that superhero name isn't. Oh, shut the fuck up! Rescue okay. guy. All right. I apologize for my French. It just really gets on my nerves. I didn't mean it. Although I kind of did. I'm sorry. <laughs> Now that you mention it, yeah, douchebag in the corner pocket. That was kind of cool. Loser racks. There you go. Now she's killing people. I mean, before, but also now, kind of. Long live the Alpha. Now that I'm your alpha, you have to do whatever I say, right? Of course. Then get up. We're wolves, not royalty. Tell me where the vampire is. I'm assuming you've met them all. We're branded. If we do exactly- Rules are rules, remember? Yes. What happened to your eyes, dude? More like a giant. No. <laughs> looking for the vampire who lives here? You're not liking much of anything. You must be Miss Michelson. Why don't you just um, run along and tell that vampire that I've already killed the witch and the wolf before this gets any creepier. The mistress of the house has been expecting you and extends you every courtesy. Please, come in. Hmm. Is it her? This is insane! You actually expect me to forgive you for running a supernatural school in our town and not telling any of the people whose lives it destroyed, including my daughter. It's a lot. How are you here? But I'm here to make peace, for both of our sakes. Once again, your application is denied. I don't care about this stupid little coin that you keep talking about, Dr. Saltzman. My daughter was eaten by a giant spider. In my defense, I was only learning about the existence fault? of monsters at the time of Dana's consumption. But let's talk about you. I didn't even know that you had died. I'm a broken heart and lung cancer. How are you not in hell? Well, because technically hell was a creation of a psychic named Cade and it's since been destroyed. Oh, I yeah. beg to differ. This is hell. I'm glad that they've mentioned that at least. Why do you even bother apologizing if you clearly don't think you've done anything wrong? She's got a point. Not helping, Landon. <gasps> Elizabeth problems? I'm just a little worried about it. She grabbed Ethan to help her with her mysterious plan and I guess that bothered me too. Hope was right. Being the leader is lonely. Do you mind if I ask your opinion on something? Although it may feel more like a burden to you. And what kind of burden? This tree is the magical loophole nature created when Hope became the tribrid. Hey, you're actually it telling someone. deadly to her. Are you saying... This is the only thing on this planet that can kill her. Yeah, that was it. Should I destroy it in order to protect Hope? Or begin sharpening it to protect the world from her? When Hope was back at the school, she handed me a sword to see if I had the guts to kill. And she said that I was weak as a leader because I wouldn't go that far. And she was right. I won't go that far no matter what. Hope is one of us, even if she doesn't know it. So I say burn it. Shanoa. I think she kept one. Oh. Why did you need him at all? You, you could just here? make yourself invisible anyway. To to scrub in the hell? This I see him in you. Oh, the pig? Oh my god, it is her. Well, I guess his relationship's off to a rocky start. Oh my god, it Don't is Don't worry, her. I know exactly how it ends. I was speaking of Niklaus. Oh my god, it is her! I don't even need to see it! I j just Pez hear her go say Niklaus. Bird. Oh, I knew it. For my name is Aurora. 
Dr. Martel. Oh, man. I'm sorry. Who? Um, Aurora? <laughs> Daughter of the Count de Martel, first vampire of Rebecca's Cyline, your father's lover and his greatest enemy, the object of his art, his desire, and his deathless scorn. Surely he must have mentioned me. Klaus was the most feared vampire on the planet, and yet he put me in a wall to desiccate, and when that failed to hold me, your stupid mother conspired to trap me in an endless slumber. Right, now that you mention it, I think I do remember who you are. You were left under a rug in a spare room of the family compound. Sort of like an old lamp. No one knew what to do with. Found that in your locker. You do have CMT. So, this has all been about my father. He dumped you. Get over it. <laughs> Repairing the sort of damage I've experienced at the hands of your father is not so simple. Klaus destroyed my life, my very sanity, over the course uh, of centuries. You're, like, so, you killed his Can you his imagine girlfriend. my disappointment when I was woken up and learned that he had taken the coward's way out for you? Well, I guess now would be a good time to tell you that my humanity is off. So guilt tripping me is just about as impossible as killing me. <laughs> then you're also a coward. But perhaps what I have planned for you will fix that little problem too. Well, I'll give you this much, your great congratulations. Yeah, am I supposed to be impressed? Do you know nothing of importance, child? I'm tempted to say that I do. Just so you'll stop talking. This blade was imbued with black magic by a witch named Papatunde. It's one of four bones culled from the hollow. Oh, yeah, the I see hollow. that name rings a bell at least. The hollow is ancient history. Almost like you're about to be. This blade all but broke your father. Do you think yourself so strong as him? You know, I'll tell you what. Why don't you come at me with that thing? Let's find out. Darling, no, that wouldn't be very supporting, would it? I'm royalty, after all, and you are my guest. This is my home, so I hold the high ground. It's only fair that I give you a head start. That's the real one. Yeah, it seemed very, um, thin. Yeah, I'm gonna play games. Tag, you're it. Wait, you heard what Cleo said, that tree can kill hope. Which is exactly why we need to salvage whatever we can. When you said you needed my help, you didn't mention that I would be an accessory to murder. This is self-defense. You just heard them, they won't fight her. No one who's gone to this school with hope their whole lives can see it. They all have a giant, tribrid-shaped blind spot. But you just got here, so you don't. And did the therapy box teach you that? What it taught me is sometimes doing the right thing means people calling you a villain. I don't know, Lizzie. Malivore already made me a villain and I hated it. I'm asking you to be a hero. That's not what you just said. <laughs> but I need someone here who's willing to protect everyone who won't protect themselves. Who will do whatever it takes to finish the job, just in case I fail. What if I phase out of here and warn MG and Cleo instead? You'll only be putting them in more danger. And I can't have that. Is that a threat? The only person I want to hurt is Hope. I like you, Ethan, so I might do a spell, make you forget we ever had this conversation. I might even be able to give you another memory. For all you'll know, we walked out to the old mill. I wanted to talk. So you heard me out and held my hand. And it was really nice. So I either lie to my best friend or the best memory I have of you and me is just a fake. Like I said, it's your choice. Well, it's about time. I was getting so bored, I almost ate some of this crap. There's some fresh blood in that decanter if you'd like. <laughs> You're crazy. <laughs> yes, of course, darling, I know. <laughs> I'd like to know more about this. I mean, I'm assuming it's the real weapon, being that it's the one you attacked me with. The other one was merely a distraction. A bone from that pig, actually. Tell me what it did to my father. Or was that a lie, too? Burrowed into his chest, rendering him unconscious in a state of impossible and unending agony. Almost like having a conversation with you. And yet here you yeah. are, prolonging our discussion. Death lasts but a moment, right? And I hope you have no idea what you're doing. You're reckless, just like your father. Only when it comes to you. You see, maybe you're the problem. Then being the tribrid doesn't make you unique. You're just like every other Michelson I've come across. And just like them. I swear to you, you will remember me. What is that? Oh, don't worry, darling. I'll explain everything once we wake up. Was that the thing that Clark used to try and 
take Landon's place? So much for defensive training. Dumb joke. I'm sorry about earlier. I should not have been giving you a hard time. It's fine. You were right. I was keeping you on defense on purpose. But it's not because I don't trust you or I don't think you could handle it. It's because I don't want to see you get hurt on those front lines. I don't know what I'm doing with this whole leadership thing, but I don't think I'm the kind of leader that'll ever be okay with leaving one of my own behind. Actually, that sounds like the kind of leader I want looking out for me. So, you and Lizzie, huh? We just took a walk out to the old mill. She just wanted to talk. It was nice. I think. Honestly, man, Lizzie just has a way of confusing me. <laughs> you chose not to let MG? Unless you use that as an excuse. I thought I might find you here. Sorry, I got a little distracted. I know I'm supposed to be finding somebody else you pissed off, but it shouldn't be too hard. No, there's no need. Because as Ted rightfully pointed out to me, the person I need to talk to is you. I'm not sure I know what you mean. I didn't know what I'd be getting you into. When Hope and I brought you to the Salvatore school, and I decided that you could stay. He wanted this to stay. This school is my home. Not the only one I ever had. But you gave up everything for it, Landon, including your life. I don't regret it. We're good. Are we? I mean, you were ready to move on to peace and tell me and my big mouth showed up. And of course, I wanted you to tell me what happened. I want to find a way back to hope, to help her. But to do that, you have to give up everything all over again. Just thought we'd already done enough, you know? Me and hope deserve to have the choice we made matter. To be happy, even though we couldn't do it together. I mean, we fought our stupid fate for so long, and we fulfilled it. So now, I have no idea what the hell I'm supposed to do. I know, and I'm sorry. His hands are already closed, which means he's gonna open it and there's a coin in there, I bet you. It's not unlike me to get so caught up in what other people need that I miss what's really happening. I let everything go today to do something that I thought was right. And for the first time in a long time, I could see myself clearer. I pulled an action figure out of a toddler's throat today, and somehow this is weirder. I told you I'd show up. No crisis to run off to? I didn't say that, but I can wait a little bit. You're just not for me. Got different stories. You know what this means, right? We might Music actually have playing. a for real, like... Not even kidding, like honest to god, date night. Usually, the music that plays has something to do with the something scene. Something plus kids saliva on it. You're just not for me. I think it was Queen who got it right. Pressure is the terror of knowing what the world is about. Solace. The only way to prevent everything from going boom is to let that pressure go. She's gonna break up with her. What did you do to me? Isn't it obvious? I tricked you. Little bird. Thanks to a little magic from dear departed Agatha. She's been watching you a long time, Hope. That's how she knew to make the trident. You didn't stab me with Papa Tunde's blade that was destroyed in order to raise the hollow. If only you I was thinking that! Knew knew your family history, you might still inhabit this tiny body. Yours isn't so roomy either, Aurora. That's been the least of its problems. Does the back of your neck itch by any chance? But you betrayed Triad. You should have burnt with the others. I did no such thing. I merely manipulated you into killing them. Magic and loopholes and... I want my body back. That body is ancient and powerful by vampiric standards. But is it any match for the Tribrid without my mind in it? I'll tell you what. Come at me and let's find out. Hmm. Hmm. So now Hope gets to play not Hope. I'm quite cute when I'm angry. Okay. Interesting. I think it would have been nice to see a little bit more of Aurora, like her character in the show, just in case you haven't seen the originals. Um, that way you could be like, oh my god, she's like, she's really Aurora, you know? I don't know. Just a little bit. I want to know that Josie is awake and the reason I chose not to inspire you today. Your inspo well was dry. I get it. And that was a lie. Truth is, I turned you away because I was afraid. We were not being honest, and I was worried about what I might inspire you to do, which was in turn not very honest of me. 
I became aware of a weapon that can kill the tribrid. Instead of telling anyone, I kept it to myself. Too afraid of what others might choose to do with it, but in doing that, I chose for you. I destroyed it. You did the right thing. That was not the reaction I expected. I've been in a dark place. If I'd known about a weapon that could hurt hope, I might have done something awful. We're good, Cleo. Thank you. That's one, which means maybe even lied. Alrighty, -o. well that was Legacies Season 4, Episode 8. Uh, definitely a better episode. Um, I like the inclusion of Aurora. I didn't like her, to be honest, but it was more of a, like, I hated her because she got in the way of Clamille, and I didn't like that she did that. Um, yeah, I like the idea that she's been introduced into the story again. Um, interesting concept, you know, we have no humanity hope, but now we have um, Aurora, who has taken over her body. Yeah, um, then we got Lizzie, who has the stake, the weapon to kill Hope, which I mean they very much could need now. Um, I liked all of the like mentioning of older things, like they mentioned the Cade Hell scenario, they didn't say anything about the other side, which is what this new like limbo thing is. It's almost like they destroy one limbo and another one takes its place, you know? Um, but yeah. I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, I didn't really understand the whole Dr. Josie situation. I got, I couldn't help but feel like I got the vibe at the end that Josie was going to break up with Finch. Especially with the song playing. You're just not for me. I don't know. Look, I will believe it when I see it, but maybe. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one. Uh, 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 uh.